Hey guys, how are you? It's Marty with Astronomy East. Uh, tonight I'm going to show you guys um, a quick session on how to set up frame and focus and an imaging session from start to finish on M15. Um, it's uh, August 30th and um, I figured I'd do this subject because it's easy to see. Um, kind of easy to see M15. It's easy to target. And it's actually got some bright stars in there where we can also just do a, uh, a focus, a frame and focus real quick to show you guys what I do when I do a frame and focus. Um, I typically use a, a batten off mask, which I think is the easiest because I don't have an autofocuser. Um, just quick to show you my profile on equipment profile. Um, I have for my profile, I have a an ASI 1600 um, mm cool camera. Um, I also have uh, for the telescope, I'm using the Celestron telescope driver ASCOM connected to the handset uh, through USB, and that's a CGX um, Celestron CGX uh, mount. Um, I'm using for the plate solve, I'm using plate solve 2 interface and um, there's some good videos on how to set this up. I won't go into this right now, but um, you have to have a plate solver for your frame and focus. You also have to have the frame and focus um, ex um, extensions installed, and that's an extra extra fee, but I highly recommend it for you guys using Sequence Generator, Generator Pro. Um, I'm using PHD2, and I'm using a, a dither. Um, and I'm using uh, pretty much, I think, the standard settings here, a small dither, and um, I think it's a random dither. And then, uh, what else do we have here? On my filters, I'm using the DWIO filter wheel. In this case, we're going to be doing LRGB tonight. So um, this is just an image, a sample image I took, a uh, two-minute image I took with a green filter, so it's a little green. Um, I use the green filter. I started using the green filter for focusing. Um, you don't have to. You can use the luminance filter. So I'll show you over here how I can set the luminance filter. You can kind of see how in Sequence Generator Pro, I won't go into it here, but you want to set up your workspace to have all the various um, things that you you want to have um, at your fingertips. Um, so I have image statistics. I have the filter wheel settings. I have my temperature and my camera cooling settings. I have the tel telescope itself and the, the thing I look at here is the time to peer flop or peer flip. So I, have, I know I have two hours before I have to worry about a peer flip. I have my PhD, PhD2 um, graph running over here. Your sequence summary, because um, later I go, what I do is I set this up and then I go back in the house or I set it up ahead of time and then I just control everything from the remote computer and I, I look at these settings. Your frame and focus is very important and histogram um, is very important. So the first thing I do is, um, what I'll do is I'll set this to five seconds. I'll take a five second image in a loop and what I'll do is I'll move the, um, I'll use this slider to actually First of all, lock the range, and then I'll move and zoom in on the bright star over here. And then what I do is I put my, in one second, I'll get my uh, fat enough mask. Hang on one second. So I put my fat enough mask on, and you can see if you zoom out, you start to see your Batanoff images here and if you kind of brighten it up you can start to see there um, hopefully you guys can see this on the video you kind of see where you want to be here and for your Batanoff you want to get you want to get this right in the middle you want to get this guy right in the middle and I know that during the night with temperature changes this thing tends to move around a little bit but right now pretty happy with it um, so I'll just use that the way it is so that kind of gives you your focus you want to use kind of a bright star it's not perfect it's actually probably a little um, off on this case 
and um, but I think it's good enough for now. And I think in when the temp the camera actually cools a little bit, it'll be a little bit better. Um, so I know I could dial that in just a little bit better, but I'm not going to mess with it right now. So it's pretty good. So you need to just remember to turn the, take the baton off mask off and then stop your frame and focusing. And then what you want to do is, um, I'm going to take you right through the frame and framing and mosaic wizard, even though I created it already. So you type up in here M15 and you do a fetch and then you'll get this frame and uh, mosaic uh, kind of layout. A, a stock image from the library and then what you do is you create a rectangle I create a small rectangle so I'm guaranteed to get one a one by one frame and you can do mosaics by changing these values down here how many tiles you want so I start with a, a single tile and it, depending on what stars I want to have into view um, like for instance you might want to get the one down here into view I kind of make sure that I can get that and then you come over here and you just say create sequence. I use all the default settings um, on that. And then what I would do here is I would replace my target. And then I would also set it to not auto rotate. And that's kind of important. If you have a rotator, it's going to give you an error message. So you turn that off. So I hit OK here. And then it creates the targets for me. So now I have a new sequence in my target list because I told it to clear all the other ones. It's important to remember that your your prof your sequence file, your SDF file matches the target. If you're doing a one to one sequence or target per sequence file, in my case that's what I do. I know some of you guys do one sequence file and you have multiple targets and I think I actually might end up going in that direction and the reason is is because if you um, accidentally forget to save your sequence as the proper file name or you have your tools options auto save sequence checked it'll automatically overwrite the last sequence file that you were working with so that's something that I noticed about sequence generator pro that I didn't like so so basically what I do is I have a one-to-one -one correspondence. Every sequence file I have, I have a, if you look over here, open sequence, I have, oh, I won't do it, but um, I have a one-to-one, -one, every sequence that I, every target that I have, I have a sequence file for it so that I can remember what I want, I was doing last. But it, it doesn't necessarily, you don't necessarily have to do that. Um, just for me so far, I found, because I'm an, new user of Sequence Generator Pro, I found that that's the easiest for me. And again, I have my camera set up, my filter wheel, and my OSCOM driver set up with no focuser. So what I want to do normally is I come in here and set your settings just to make sure that you're going to center on a target. And again, your rotator is turned off. And then you have your base directory set up. Normally you have to have that. And then another thing you do is now you want to create, what I do is I just create, I don't know what you guys do, please leave some comments if you, uh, if you have some ideas on how to do this better, but I actually just do a quick, a light luminance, depending on the night and the subject, it's either lumin luminance or HA. Then I just type in test here, so I know later not to use that image. And then I'll put like um, 30 seconds in here. And then I would, um, I would just do this test sequence starting with, with this. Um, and, and so let's actually run that. So let's do that. That's actually going to, I need to actually reset my sequence because I was running it before. So I reset the sequence and I know right from the beginning it's going to go ahead and um, slew the scope. So it slewed the scope. It's pretty close to that object already. It's going to do a, uh, a plate solve based on where it is, it's going to validate that using the plate solve library and the plate solver that you have. So it's doing that now. Um, sometimes it has to retry the operation. And then what it'll do is it'll start the auto guider. 
down here you can see in the status messages it's starting the auto guider and in this in this case um i had i have a, a really bad scene not really bad but i have poor scene conditions tonight so my bullseye is all over the place it's not bad um, but it's over one arc second which is typically i won't image unless i have under one arc second so i'm kind of waiting for the skies to get a little clearer there's there's some haze in the sky tonight on a summer night in august in connecticut so um, plus i changed my aggression settings maybe i'll go back up and move those back to 100 percent aggression but um, i can tell that we have you know the skies aren't great tonight so um in this case it's resuming the auto guider and hopefully that's going to settle and now it's taking a 30 second exposure um and i'll probably just fast forward to that image for you guys in a second all right so when that image comes up you can close this window down the sequence window and it's going to ask you to run end of sequence options i always say no because sometimes it crashes the the sequence for some reason sometimes uh, an event might not work correctly so uh then you just stretch this to high just to see what you have here and you can zoom in and you can use the mouse wheel to change your just um your your auto stretching ability and you can kind of see what's going on here in the image um, so that's m15 the stars look pretty round you can go all the way to the corners and see how you're doing i do have a um, focal reducer uh, so my stars are pretty good with the scope um, i have a skywatcher 120 esprit apo um, i love the scope it has nice flat images with um, not a lot of coma issues um, not that you'd get that with a refractor but i love my scope i love the focal reducer i love the focuser on the scope it's a three and a half inch focuser i i love the fact that it has a lock button on it so that's your test image of m15 um in luminance so uh and the mean read out there is 1293 i don't know if that's you know you probably don't need to go two minutes on an object like this so what we can do is let's go back over to the sequencer we'll show it we can close all these windows i like to close all the windows when i'm working and then what i would do is now set up another run with the real run below it so this would be let's say we're going to do let's just say 60 second exposures because we have poor scene conditions tonight um or actually let's just do 30 30 second exposures I think that's enough for m15 and let's say we want to do 20 of those tonight and then let's um create an event here and we'll say copy from event 2 and we'll change that luminance to red we'll copy from event 2 again we'll change this to green and then copy from event 2 again and we'll call that blue and then we have 30 second 20 30 second images for luminance red green and blue we'll uncheck the test one um actually maybe we'll keep the test run again because we're going to go back in the house and we want any settling to happen after that 30 seconds it's not going to hurt anything and what i like to do because i don't have an autofocuser and i don't have a huge window of opportunity i choose this rotate through events um so the default is finished in the entire event first before going on to the next event. But what I choose to do is rotate through the event. I notice it doesn't really change my focus too much um, on my filters. So I'm not really worried about that. Um, so in that case, we can just double check that we're going to center on our target. We're not going to rotate our camera. And we're going to reset the sequence. And this is going to tell us to start we're all set we're going to start the sequence and we're going to go inside the house and um hopefully we'll have a good set of images for m15 um at least until later where i can get my goal tonight my subject tonight is going to be the triangulum galaxy it's not up in the sky yet high enough for me i need to wait till about maybe 30 degrees or maybe even more more like 45 degrees 
um, in the east to where I can start imaging that. So and again, we have two hours to pier flop here. This says it's going to take 40 minutes for all of that. So we can actually up these numbers if we wanted to. We could um, we can up these numbers to I want to maybe take 30 images of all these just to get our data going higher to get more data. And you can see the time now is changed to 55 minutes. So we have 55 minutes of, or no, we have an hour and 30 seconds of, of uh, an hour plus the 30 seconds up here of sequence that we're going to run. So um, let's run it and let's, it, it'll start the, again, it'll start the uh, frame and focus with the plate solve. Um, and then it's going to start the auto guider. In a second here. So we got that going. Now we're going to start the auto guider. And we're, you know, we're still pretty bad scene conditions, but I'm not going to complain for now because really doing this video tonight just as an example of using Sequence Generator Pro, setting up the frame and mosaic wizard, and using, uh, showing you how I auto, uh, how I focus the scope and also how to create just a basic sequence um, for some of you guys that wanted to know a little bit more about how we go about creating these sequences and maybe even what you guys do differently uh, we can share information so we're, it's, got, it's creating that first test image now so I'll go inside the house and then later we'll take a look at a couple test images and we'll combine them in Pix Insight. So the next video I'll show you, or the tail end of this video, I'll show you what we do in Pix Insight to combine these things. Thanks for watching. Talk to you soon.